When you're ready to install Git on a Windows machine, you have a number of options available to you, but the one I've had the most success with is one called MSYS Git. And what I'm doing is just searching for this in Google, and I'm gonna go ahead and go straight to the downloads page in the results. Once you're here, go ahead and download the latest version of MySYS Git. And once you have it downloaded, let's go ahead and open it up and go through the installation process. So I've already moved it over to a virtual machine here, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up the exe file. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. We'll go ahead and agree to the license. Now you can put this anywhere in your hard drive, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at its suggested program file slash git. And here you have some options before you install. So we have some additional icons. We'll go ahead and leave those checked. We have Windows Explorer integration, and we can add some context menus so that when we right click on a file, for example, we can automatically go to the Git tools that are installed. Let's go ahead and check that. We have associate Git configuration files with the default text editor. Let's go ahead and leave that checked. Associate sh files to be run with bash. We'll leave that checked too. And finally, use a true type font in all console windows. Let's go ahead and check that too. That will just improve the look when we're working on the command line. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. Okay, this next step says we can install this in the start menu folder. Let's go ahead and keep that selected. Now here we have the option of deciding where we want to use the command line tools. Do we want to use them in the custom shell that gets installed with MSYS Git? And when I say shell, I simply mean a window where we type commands in order to run them. Or do we want to just run git from the command prompt that comes with Windows by default? Or do we want to run all of the programs that get installed with MSYS git on the Windows command prompt? Now git is installed through this process, but also some additional tools like the ability to patch the ability to do certain commands on the command line that are usually not available in a Windows environment but are in a Linux environment. Let's go ahead and select use git bash only. I'm gonna click next. Now here we have the option of deciding how we want line endings to appear inside of text files. By default, Windows uses a different line ending character than Unix systems. If this sounds unfamiliar to you, what this means is that at the end of a line, when you're dealing with a text file, there's a character there that you don't see that specifies that we've reached the end of a line and we need to move on to the next line. Windows uses a particular invisible character to do this, but Linux uses a different one. And so typically, when you're working with a Windows system, you're also dealing with other people or servers that are on Linux or Mac, which also use the Linux line endings. And so there can be some confusion. So we have some options here. It says we can check out with Windows style, commit Unix style line endings. What this means is that we'll be able to use text files in any editor inside of Windows and know that we have the right line endings for Windows. But when we go to push changes that other people might use in different environments, we go ahead and replace those with Unix style line endings by default and we have other options to check out as is, so we get any Unix line endings and just have to deal with them in our environment, or we can check out as is and also commit any changes with those line endings. It's probably safest to leave that first option checked, so let's do that and click next. And now the installation process begins. Now it can take quite a while in order for this to work, so just give it a minute and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, it looks like we're good to go. We can view the release notes, but let's go ahead and uncheck that and click finish. Now let's open up the git bash, which is the command prompt, by clicking on the shortcut icon on the desktop. Now you see it opens up this terminal window. You'll hear me use the terms terminal, bash, and command line window all synonymously to describe this at various points depending on what operating system we're on. Now it says here at the top that we can run git help git in order to display the help index. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna type git help 
git. When the command started running, it said launching default browser to display HTML, and so it opened up this browser window that included a manual page for git to tell us more about the command or the topic that we want to learn about. While we're going to be spending most of our time on the command line, occasionally a visual representation of what we're doing in Git is going to be very helpful. And so we're going to install a GUI or GUI for Git called SmartGit. SmartGit is cross-platform, so even though we'll be doing most of the series on a Mac, you'll be able to duplicate everything we do inside of SmartGit simply because the interface is the same. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the browser, and I'm going to open up a new tab and do a search for SmartGit. I'm going to go ahead and click on the download link, and it allows us to select the operating system to download for. It automatically senses that I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to click on All Downloads. And then here under Windows, I'm going to click on the Installer with JRE. Now SmartGit runs as a Java application, so you need the Java runtime environment in order for it to work. So we're just going to get the entire bundle. Now one cool thing about SmartKit is that it's free for non-commercial use. So if you're just testing it out, or you're going to be working on some non-profit websites, then you can go ahead and download it for free, and continue to use it for free. So I'm going to go ahead and check, I've read, understand, and agree, and click download, and that will start the download. Okay, so I've gone ahead and downloaded SmartKit. I'm going to jump back to Windows here. And you'll need to unzip the package and run the .exe file. This one's called setup206jre. And you can choose the location of the program. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at its default. I'll leave the shortcut as SmartKit2. And we'll create a desktop icon. And click Install. And when it's done, go ahead and click Finish. At this point, we'll be going back to a Mac interface to complete the series. But with MSYSGit plus SmartGit, you'll be able to follow along exactly with what we do from here on out. And at any point where there's going to be a difference in the way that you approach things on Windows, we'll come back to the Windows environment and take a look.